Just as it's difficult to be healthy in a toxic physical environment if we're breathing poisoned air or drinking polluted water, so it's difficult to be healthy in what I call a toxic cultural environment. I started collecting ads in the late 1960s. Ads sell more than products. They sell values, they sell images, they sell concepts of love and sexuality, of success, and perhaps most important, of normalcy. Well, what does advertising tell us about women? It tells us, as it always has, that what's most important is how we look. So the first thing the advertisers do is surround us with the image of ideal female beauty. Women learn from a very early age that we must spend enormous amounts of time, energy, and above all, money, striving to achieve this look and feeling ashamed and guilty when we fail. And failure is inevitable because the ideal is based on absolute flawlessness. She never has any lines or wrinkles. She certainly has no scars or blemishes. Indeed, she has no pores. And the most important aspect of this flawlessness is that it cannot be achieved. No one looks like this, including her. This is a look that's been created for years through airbrushing and cosmetics, but these days it's done through the magic of computer retouching. I've been talking about this for a very long time, and I keep thinking that the models can't get any thinner, but they do. They get thinner and thinner and thinner. We all grow up in a culture in which women's bodies are constantly turned into things, into objects. Turning a human being into a thing is almost always the first step toward justifying violence against that person. Most important is to change not just these ads, but these attitudes that run so deep in our culture. The obsession with thinness is a public health problem, the tyranny of the ideal image of beauty, violence against women. These are all public health problems that affect us all, and public health problems can only be solved by changing the environment.